Welcome to Algolamp. Today, we will build your very first strategy together. I will show you that strategy building is not about chance or luck, but about a clear process that can be repeated over and over again. Before we begin, quick note. Everything you'll see here, including the workflows, settings and strategy examples, is intended solely for studying how to work with algorithmic strategies. This is not investment advice. Today, you will learn the basics of how to build a strategy, how to choose the right market, how to set up your workflow and how to run your first build. After this lesson, you will know exactly where to click, what to set up and how to start creating your own strategies. This lesson has four main parts. First, which markets are suitable for building ATS. Second, the workflow, meaning the process that makes strategy development consistent. Third, custom projects, so how to automate your work. And finally, we will run the build itself in StrategyQuant. Let's start by selecting a market. If you want to start simple, the easiest option is Forex pairs. Mainly, major currencies such as EURUSD or GBPUSD. They have stable liquidity, a long history and tend to be the most predictable for breakout strategies. From experience, I also can recommend cross pairs such as EURJPY or GBPJPY. And if you want to try something more dynamic that consistently brings profits, especially in a crisis, then definitely XAUUSD, which is gold. Another good choice to complement your portfolio are CFD indices, Nasdaq, Dow Jones and S&P 500. If you prefer futures, here is the ideal start package. Indices such as Nasdaq, Dow Jones or S&P 500 are a great choice due to their long history and high liquidity. In metals analogous to CFDs, it is definitely gold, a market that responds to macroeconomic cycles and has long trends. The goal is simple. Start with markets that give strategies the best statistical chance of success and there is high liquidity. Now for the most important thing, the workflow. At Algolab, we don't do what most beginners do. We don't just click the build strategy button. Instead, we use a process that is proven, consistent and leads to more robust strategies. First comes the idea, then the market selection, then measurable rules, testing, filtering, building a strategy incubator, verification with real or dimmer results, and finally the resulting strategy, which we incorporate into the portfolio with other strategies. To know that a strategy is really worthwhile, we need to look at several key metrics. This tells us how stable, safe and long-term usable the strategy really is. The basis is the profit factor. This shows us how profitable the strategy is compared to losses. The second important metric is the return drawdown ratio. This one tells us how much profit we can generate per unit of risk. And of course, we need a sufficient number of trades for the results to be statistically significant and not just a coincidence. Then there is the sharp ratio, a great indicator of how effectively a strategy can convert volatility into profit. In other words, whether it makes money in a reasonable way or just happens to flow between market fluctuations. All of this together gives us a picture of how stable the strategy is and whether it has a chance of surviving in real conditions. And I will show you how to read these values, combine them and make decisions based on them. Let's start with the easiest preset projects. This will give you a solid foundation on which to build. We will modify them step by step according to our needs. Gradually, you will understand how to create your own workflow. This will allow you to proceed with confidence and know exactly what you are doing. We will automate our build using the following tabs. Here you can see an example of what a custom project workflow might look like. It is a basic workflow that you can gradually expand with additional tests. However, I recommend evaluating and setting some tests manually, such as the walk forward metrics. You can automate building, testing, optimization or equity curve analysis using metrics, data downloads and advanced custom analysis. And now it's time to move to the platform. I will show you step by step how to run a build and where to find the key settings. So let's go straight to strategy quant. 
let's switch to the Custom Project tab. We will build an hourly time frame for Nasdaq. Here, I select this predefined custom project, which we will gradually modify. It is important to note that individual tasks in a custom project run sequentially and are triggered from top to bottom. So, let's start with the first task, which is Build Strategies. Here, you can see that we have set the build period from 2017 to the beginning of 2023, with an out-of-sample period set from May 15th, 2021 to 2023. This means that we are still keeping some data that we will use in addition test to make sure that our strategy will also work on the data it has not seen before. Now let's show you how to set up the build from a template, meaning from our idea that we built in the previous lesson. Go to what to build and click on strategy from template. Select the template we created and let's look at the other settings. In this section, we set the individual parameters of the strategy, whether it should be long or short only. In our case, we will choose long only and select that we want a trading style. We could also build strategies using fusion logic, but in this case, we will leave it just as it is. In this settings, we choose whether we want to use genetics or random generation. For this particular case, I will leave genetics enabled and here we select how many conditions to use in the input condition, in the exit condition and what global indicator period to use. For now, I will simplify this build and want a maximum of two conditions, a maximum of two conditions at uh, the same time. We also set the value of the indicators to 400. Here we set the shift that will be used in the indicators. We click on save and in this section we set the stop loss or profit target. In our case we will use the default setting with which we will achieve a written drawdown ratio from 1 to 1 to 3. So ideally we want our strategies to risk one unit and ideally have 2 to 3 units of potential profit. In this section we set genetics but we recommend leaving the default values. Here we set what kind of engine we want and when the data should be set from and to. We also set precision. By default, we use selected time frame only, but in the cross checks, we will then use a higher precision so that we can streamline the construction or the build and make it faster. We have your spread, commission, swaps, and I recommend using some every slippage per trade in the build so that we can build strategies that will take into account real market execution. In the section, we set the in-sample and out-of-sample periods. For now, I leave these values the same, so we can move on to the next step and build intra-week strategies, meaning with Friday as the exit day. This is a kind of endurance against Monday gaps. In this section, it is also important to set the session, but this is selected automatically if you are using MetaTrader 5. In this section, we set the indicators to be used in the build. In this case, I will leave the default ones and comments are also set in the sections. But please note that whatever is set in the template takes precedence over what you have set here in the builder. So if you have entered a limit order here and you use a stop order in the template, then what is in the template will absolutely apply. The next step is advanced trade management, but we won't be using that for now. Next one is money management. Here we use money management fixed size with one lot. In the cross check tab, we have individual tasks for robustness testing, but I don't recommend using them in build. And for now, we will only use backtest on higher precision. So. We will verify whether the strategy will work at high precision, thereby eliminating strategies that will be potentially unsuitable for further testing. But with this cross check, you can streamline the entire build, especially for weaker computers. And the last important step is ranking. Here we set the number of strategies in the data bank and set the so-called fillers, which we use to determine whether strategies will be accepted into the data bank or not. The first filler is average trades per month. We require two, at least two trades per month, 
for strategies to have a profit factor of 1.3, a return drawdown ratio of 4, and a winning percentage of at least 30 in the in-sample period. We also require that strategies have at least 50 trades in the out-of-sample period, so that the sample is statistically significant in some way. And that's it for the build task. Now let's show how to update the rest of the test to the current date so that we can use the latest data. I will describe the individual task right away. Let's switch to the next task by clicking the mouse. And in this task, uh, we test on unseen data, meaning from 2023 to the current date. So the data we did not use in the initial build. Now we set the current date by either clicking and then selecting the date manually. But I will now copy the date to the clipboard using the Ctrl C shortcut. And I will reset it here. The dates are reset to the current date and I will copy the date back using Ctrl V. Now I have this task updated to the current date. In the ranking, we have said that strategies that are not profitable will be excluded for this period. Let's move on to the next task, which is Dow Jones, or it is on additional market or another market. In this task, since we want to test the strategy across the entire range, all we have to do is click the reset button and the dates will be reset. If you look at the ranking option, um, we, what we want is a strategy to be at least profitable with a profit factor of 1.1 for this market. Let's move on to the next task, which is S&P 500. And if you look at the data tab, we have an all the range set here so again we click reset when we look at the ranking we again exclude all strategies that do not achieve at least a profit factor of 1.1 we move on to the next task and when we look at the data tab we have a range here we are testing the strategy on a higher time frame meaning h4 and again click reset dates in this task, we don't need to test slip it, so that's why it's set to zero here. This is to verify whether the data structure significantly affects the strategy. And the strategy should pass this test. Here in this task, we require that the profit factor in this task be at least one. We move on to the next task, which is testing on a lower time frame, M30, so 30 minutes. Again, click on reset dates. Um, again, want the strategy to be at least profitable, so a profit factor of 1. Now, uh, slippage test. When it comes to data, click the button Reset Dates again. And in this task, um, there is set a triple slippage, so 5,000 points. We want the strategy to achieve, to achieve a profit factor of at least 1 in the original data. The next test we have in the sequence is Monte Carlo simulation. Again, reset the date so that we can test on the entire data set. And when you click on the cross check tab, you can see that cross check Monte Carlo retest method is enabled. When we click on it, we see that we have this test for parameter changes checked here. We are testing with a probability of 30% with a maximum parameter change of 30%. The setting would be used if we had two sided strategies and wanted to test symmetrical parameters. However, at this point, we are building long-only strategies. When we switch to the filtering tab, you see that we have set the return drawdown ratio to Monte Carlo retest simulations with a confidence level of 95%. And we require that the strategy achieve at least 50% in Monte Carlo simulations of the original return drawdown ratio value. So in this test, we have 30 simulations set. Later, I will show you how to test the strategy on more simulation. I recommend leaving the value low in this automatic workflow for now, and I will show you later. But for those of you who have more powerful computers, for example, 20 cores or more, you can set 200 simulations here. However, we will leave it at this value for now. Let's switch to the next step. We are testing to randomly skip trades again we reset the dates to the current dates and when we switch to cross-check robustness testing we have monte carlo trades manipulation turned on 
Again, we have 30 simulations and we have said that we want to randomly skip trades with a probability of 20%. When we switch to the filtering tab, we again want the return drawdown ratio in Monte Carlo simulations to reach at least 50% of the original value. We want to eliminate strategies that may be potentially sensitive to execution. You can imagine this as trading a strategy in a real environment and having your platform crash, for example. How sensitive is the strategy when you miss some trades? In the last task, we have all the data set up and here we just retest with a delay so that the results are realistic. And when we look at the cross check on other markets, my goal in this task is to test the strategies on all markets and have them ready for some visual inspection to see how the strategies perform on other markets. So when we switch back to the build task, we start the whole build with the start button. I will let a few strategies generate for now and I will show you how to save the strategies. Let the entire workload run. And if you look at the last task, all the final strategies will be stored in this databank. So all the strategies that have passed. We can see that strategy quant is already generating the first strategies and I'm just going to start the build for now. Let the whole build run and in the next lesson, I will show you how to continue working with the strategies in robustness tests. You can save the strategies either by selecting and clicking on each strategy or you can select all of them and save them somewhere. Select them all, click on save to SQX format and save them somewhere on your disk. It's up to you. I save these strategies here in this folder and then we will continue working with them. So that's all for now. If you have any questions, please write to us in the comments or email us at lab at strategicone.com. If you like the video, give it a like, subscribe and see you in the next one. Goodbye.